of the st uh, state of the protein okay so that is the important part now we are going to look at the protein folding and some very basic things about the protein folding uh, with the help of the Anfinsen's experiment. Now uh, Anfinsen uh, uh, is a pioneer uh, who started to think about the protein folding in different ways and he, he just conducted this experiment. He is having a native uh, protein. He just took the ribonucleus uh, as the its uh, start point of the protein folding. So we have a native ribonucleus and what what he uh, did in this case, they uh, he ju just added the 8 molar urea uh, along with beta markup to ethanol. These are the disrupting agents. Now, beta markup to ethanol is going to disrupt the disulfide linkages uh, among the protein subunits, protein domains, and motifs. They are going to disrupt the disulfide linkages, and urea is going to disrupt the structure of the protein, uh, other hydrogen bonds of the protein. Okay, uh, it is going to stabilize the protein in, in its native uh, form like that. Okay, so uh, they are adding all this. After addition of all this, what happens? The native uh, protein is just getting denatured into something like that. Okay, it it make uh, uh, this random coil. Okay, and this random coil shows no activity because this is not a folded protein. And as we know, protein folding is the most important thing about the protein function because unless the protein is folded, protein cannot function. Okay, so after doing this, the protein uh, structure uh, will no longer active. Now, uh, th then then uh, then what he uh, did in this case, they denatured the reduced ribonuclease. And and after having this denatured ribonucleus, they dialysis he dialyzes uh, and remove all the urea and also removes the beta markup to ethanol. And after removing the urea and beta markup to ethanol uh, through the dialysis step, uh, he just air oxidize all those sulfide linkages. And after that, uh, uh, the hypothesis was that all those sulfur will start to make the disulfide linkages after the with the help of air oxidation. And uh, the hypothesis was proven right, and they get the native ribonucleus, and this ribonucleus is fully functional ribonucleus, like the previous one. So what what he did in this case, they took a ribonucleus, they disrupt the structure, they make it denatured, then again remove uh, the causative agents which which actually denatured this ribonucleus, and that eventually turns the ribonucleus into an active conformation. Okay. So after the denatures, it can uh, it can ha also process the same type of the same activity. So by looking at this, what he uh, what we can conclude that all the information that is necessary for a protein folding is is not at all pro uh, incorporated in the secondary structure, in the tertiary structure, or in the quaternary structure. Now all the information necessary for the protein folding is rather incorporated in its native structure, in its primary sequence. Okay. So primary sequence have it all. It's only dependence on the interaction. It's only on the interaction when the interaction start to have, when the amino acids start to interact with each other, we are having properly folded protein. Okay. Now uh, we are uh, going to talk about the second step of the Anfinsen's experiment, which reveals another conclusion: that uh, uh, after uh, suppose after uh, doing this, after um, using the uh, eight molar urea and beta markup to ethanol to denature uh, this ribonucleus, uh, he go through another he, he uh, another round uh, set of experiment. In this experiment, in this case, he is just removing uh, uh, only uh, the beta markup to ethanol. But not removing any urea, okay? Just removing the beta markup to ethanol. And as we know, if we remove the beta markup to ethanol, that means the, the those sulfur uh, groups, those SH groups inside uh, those uh, thionine and serine residues in in the amino acid sequence, they can interact with each other to make disulfide bronze. So they just remove this beta beta markup to ethanol, and what they can see, they can see uh, the protein uh, will make a structure of scrambled ribonucleus. This is not the ideal structure of ribonucleus that we used to find. This is a scrambled structure of ribonucleus. Uh, we can see, uh, we can tell this is the, uh, th this is not the properly folded structure, but this is, uh, 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 and lo we look for the activity of this scrambled ribonucleus, and this shows no activity at all. Why this is actually happening? We are removing the beta markup to ethanol. That means we are enabling, uh, we are make this uh, this uh, sulf uh, this SH containing amino acid. We are enabling them to make bonds with each other, to make disulfide linkages with each other. They can make this linkage, but we are not removing the urea. Th that's why. Uh, that's why the protein structure will be will be freezed in this kind of situation. Okay. 
So that is a point. Now, if we further add, 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 add addition of the trace amount of beta mark cap to ethanol uh, is done, then what we can happen? Then we can see the scrambled ribonuclease suddenly get a meaning. The scrambled ribonuclease finally make a structure which, which in turn is very very much active, like the original native ribonuclease. Okay. So, uh, so another important part is in this case is the native form of the protein has the thermodynamically most stable structure. That's why any nearer structure about this native configuration. So, if we if we produce a near about structure of the native conformation, very near about structure, very similar structure of the native ribonucle uh, native uh, protein conformation, but still the protein wants to go to this native structure. It's always a journey. It's always a journey for the protein. This is the take home message. It's always the more importance of the protein. It's always print in the mind of the protein that we have to go to the native state. So, whether we are going very very close to the native state, it is 19. 9% similar to the native state but still the, they need to make this another 1% to make the 100% native state so it is a journey from their native from their uh, scramble state from their unfolded states toward the native state where they belong and this native state and that's because the native state is the most thermodynamically favorable structure okay so that's why this this thing is happening all the time okay and uh, we can also think that this disulfide linkages are important because uh, when we uh, just first remove this beta mark cap ethanol the disulfide uh, linkage is formed but the formation of disulfide linkage is not uh, mm, the the sequence uh, not not uh, not the uh, the amount or the sequence we we needed for a properly active enzyme now you can see in this picture this this enzyme after the removal of the beta mark cap ethanol can have this disulfide bonds but the disulfide bonds form between 26 and 40 and 84 and 95 and those gives rise to the uh, um, less effective uh, and no active uh, as, as and without uh, any activity of this uh, uh, this uh, activity of this uh, enzyme but if we uh, add beta mark cap ethanol then we remove all these things then we remove urea and then what we can have then we are having again disruption of this disulfide linkages and right disulfide linkages actually formed. So it is not about the linkages, it's not about only the interactions, hydrogen in bonding, hydrophobic interactions or disulfide bridges formation, it's about the right things, uh, uh, formation of the right thing, the uh, formation of uh, the right interaction. So for, a, for this ribonuclease, the bonding, the sul disulfide linkage between 26 and 84 amino acid residue is important rather than the 26 and 40. So if disulfide bridge is formed between the 26 and 40 residue instead of 26 and 84th residue, then uh, it, it will make a structure which is no longer active. So it's not about only the making bonds, it's about the specific bonding. So the bonding is specified to make uh, the native state. So that's why the native state is really, really one in a million. We can find only one native state because there are lots of amino acid sequences and there are lots of combination of, uh, of amino acid can be done, but only one type of combination is favored and that is the native combination. Okay, so that's why it's a very, very difficult journey to go from unfolded st state to the native state. But proteins can achieve that. And th for achieving this thing, uh, there are some other proteins which actually help uh, proteins to achieve that. Because sometimes proteins uh, find this uh, really, really tough uh, to, to achieve. So in those situations, they have proteins like chaperones, chaperonin, which is actually helping the protein to achieve this very, very dangerous task.